Perhaps one of the greatest tragic figures of the Old Testament is the prophet Jeremiah, who experienced a great deal of hardship and frustration and opposition in his work as a prophet, uh, all of which God promised him would happen, but God also promised, I will be with you to deliver you. And in addition to his prophecies of judgment and of salvation, in addition to the uh, stories of Jeremiah's life in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, are also scattered at various locations throughout the book, prayers in which Jeremiah just lets go his frustration of the whole situation and just throws it all at the feet of God. Among my favorite is a prayer that Jeremiah offers in which he says, You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and I've resolved I will not preach your word anymore. But then he goes on to say, but that word is bubbling inside of me, and so I have no choice but to, to speak it and to proclaim it. Jeremiah experienced a great deal of frustration during his mission as a prophet, from his family, from society, from the religious leaders, and even from the political leaders and the king. No one listened to him, and every now and again he would just let that out in his prayer to God. And in the reading for this Saturday of the fourth week of Lent, we hear a portion from the prophet Jeremiah in which he says, I knew their plot because the Lord informed me. At that time, you, O Lord, showed me their doings. Yet I, like a trusting lamb led to the slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. Let us destroy the tree in its vigor. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will be spoken no more. And there are other such stories like that in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, in which he gets relentless opposition and heartache and hardship because of the message he proclaims. A man of great frustration and of great tragedy in the fact that he lived to see his own nation fall at the hands of the Babylonian Empire and see a great portion of his, his people go off into exile. And a once great kingdom is now no more. But the reading today takes a turn that might be somewhat surprising for someone who's a prophet or even a follower of Christ, for that matter, as Jeremiah continues when he says, But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Vengeance is what Jeremiah is asking for. And that might be surprising. I mean, Jeremiah is a prophet. He's a man of God, and he's asking God for vengeance. But it's not necessarily the vengeance in terms of getting even. What Jeremiah wants is God to intervene to give him vindication in his mission, in his message as a prophet. In other words, he's basically saying, Lord, give me some indication that it's sinking in. Give me some indication that something is going right for me. Because this is all he sees are people plotting against him because of his message. The Lord of hosts knows it because he told me about it and it's happening. And so he's asking for vengeance, not in terms of getting even, but in terms of vindication for him and his work. We perhaps can relate to that every now and again. I've, I've talked to people who, who find great frustration, perhaps even confusion with God, frustration with family, with society, you name it. We are living in a very hostile society that is, is not open to the message of the gospel, uh, the message of, of, of the prophets in our midst, so to speak. And I've had people sometimes very crestfallen asking me, Lord, Father, what kind of world are my children going to grow up in? What kind of world will my grandchildren be living in? Uh, a world that is just so hostile to the message and the values that we have, in which you know we profess it, we live it, and we're called names, we're called politically incorrect, we're called haters, we're called whatever phobic because we adhere to the values as, as God calls us to live as people made in his image and likeness and, and followers of Christ. And in deference to Jeremiah, I'll often ask people, have you prayed that frustration? And people can be very reluctant because they don't want to express anger at God. Uh, again, somehow painting God as this image, this person that's going to hit them with lightning if they express any kind of anger. People have expressed worse uh, to God and they have not had lightning come down and strike them. But Keep in mind that God knows what's in our hearts and in our minds. God knows how we're feeling. And if anything, God wants honesty from us. Remind God of his promise and ask him for fidelity to fulfill that promise. And sometimes just express your, your frustration, your anger, your confusion. And perhaps even in our prayer, we could ask for proverbial vengeance. Not vengeance in terms of revenge and getting even, 
but vengeance that gives us some indication that the work we're doing as a people of faith is bearing fruit. My work as a priest to the congregation that I preach to and work with, parents to their children, just the community of the church in a society that is so hostile toward it. Lord, give us some indication that something is going our way, that the values we cherish are little by little becoming the norm or becoming understood by a society, the society around us because we see such hostility, we see such mistreatment, uh, and we experience such frustration as followers of Christ, as people who share a covenant with God. Let's pray that as Jeremiah does, and let us ask for that vengeance, not in terms of getting even or out and out revenge, but there's certainly nothing wrong as we grow in prayer to ask God from the depths of our hearts, give us some indication that our work is bearing fruit. And perhaps it is then that God will hear our prayer because it comes from a true honesty built from frustration, the same kind of frustration that Jeremiah experienced. And perhaps when we reach that true honesty, then we might be granted the insight to see where God in fact is answering our prayer, where God is in fact delivering us as he promised Jeremiah, and where our work, our faith, are raising our families in those standards, are in fact bearing fruit, even though at frustrating times it doesn't always seem that that is so.